Now, in this video, I'm going to teach you sampling distributions of a proportion. Remember that in part one and part two of this series, I've talked on sampling distribution of a mean, okay? But here, I'm going to talk about sampling distribution of a proportion, all right? Of a proportion. Now, when we say a proportion, what is a proportion? A proportion is a fraction of values in a population that have a specific attribute. So the proportion is simply X over N or the number of items in the population having the attribute of interest. So let's say in a class, there are Twenty-five males and seventy-five females. So the total number of people in the class is hundred. The n is hundred. So if I want to find the proportion of male, it will be the number of people who are male. So male is like the attribute of interest here because I'm finding the proportion of male. So it will be the number of male over the total number of people, which will be zero point two five. So the proportion of males in that class is 0.25. So we can do that for a population. We can also do that for a sample. Now, proportion is very important in statistics because there are some research that you just want to know the proportion of people who have a certain attribute. You may not want to know any average or anything, but I just want to know the proportion of people who have a certain attribute. That is why we teach proportions. Now, sampling error of a proportion. Remember that I told you that sampling error is the difference between a measure computer for a sample and the corresponding measure computer for a population. So if you want to know the sampling error for a proportion, it is just the sample proportion minus the population proportion. And that is the sampling error of a proportion. Remember the sampling error of a mean was sample mean minus population mean. So here, the sample error of a proportion is the sample proportion minus the population proportion. Now, in a question, when you are not given a population proportion and you are even asked to do computations, the best estimate of a population proportion that you can have is the sample proportion. However, it can be a best estimate if and only if the sample size is large. However, it can be a best estimate if and only if the sample size is large. All right, because we all know that if the sample size is large, it means that the sampling distribution will be normally distributed. And it means that the sample proportion can be a best estimate of the population proportion. Now, how do we know a large sample size of a proportion? The, the large sample size of a proportion is when NP is greater than or equal to five and when n into bracket one minus p is greater than or equal to five. So let's see, the example I gave, the proportion was 25 over 100. So the, pro the proportion of male was 0.25, okay? Now let's assume that this 100 is a sample, it's not the whole class. Let's assume this 100 is a sample. And out of that 100 sample, 25 are male, 25 are female. It means that the sample size, okay, the sample size will be 100, all right? So it means that NP, that is the sample size times the proportion will be 25, okay? So in essence, for the sample size to be large, when you multiply the sample size by the proportion, okay, you should get more than five. That is this theory. And then N into bracket one minus a proportion. So here, 100 into bracket one minus a proportion of 0 0.25 should be greater than or equal to five. 
and that'll be 100 times 0 0.75. And that is also 75, far bigger than five. So for a sampling distribution to have a large sample size, these conditions must exist. And if the sampling distribution have a large sample size, it means that the sample proportion will be a best estimate of the population proportion because the sampling distribution of the proportion will be normal. Once it's normal, the sampling proportion will be a best estimate of the population proportion. So, in other words, the mean of all sample proportion should be approximately equal to the population proportion. We learned that from theory one, that the mean of all sample mean should be equal to population mean. So here, the mean of all sample proportions should be equal to the population proportion. Okay, we don't need to prove this because we've learned it. We've learned a similar one earlier. Then the standard deviation of all sampling proportions should be equal to square root of population proportion into bracket one minus p all over the sample size. Okay. But when we are doing that for mean, we said that the mean of all sample means should be equal to the population mean. And then the standard deviation of all sample means should be equal to standard deviation of population over square root of n. That's what we did for mean. Okay. But here we are in proportion. So, So these computations is for sampling distribution of mean and this computation is for sampling distribution of proportion. So it should be easier for us to follow, all right? Okay, theory five. Regardless of the value of population proportion P, with obvious expectation of P is equal to zero and P is equal to one, the sampling distribution of the sample proportion will be approximately normal distributed with the mean of the proportion, sample proportion is equal to population proportion. And then the standard deviation of the pro sample proportion, that is the same as saying the standard error of the sample proportion is equal to this. When we have large sample size, and when do we have large sample size, when this is there and this is there. Okay, so all that we are saying in theory five is that when we have a large sample size, these two conditions will exist. These two conditions will exist. And when do we have large sample size? I will, I've already explained to you that when this condition and this condition also exist. Now let's end with the z-score of a proportion. Z-score of a proportion. Now, when we talk about sampling error, sorry, when we talk about Z value for a proportion, okay, we all know that Z value is the score, whatever score it is, whether sample mean or proportion, minus the population score divided by standard deviation. So here, for proportions, the proportion score for the sample proportion will be sample proportion minus the mean of all sample proportions is the population proportion divided by the standard deviation of all sample proportions is the standard error of the proportion, which is this standard error of the proportion. All right, so remember that the standard error of proportion is given as this. So in essence, if you expand the z-score to be z-score is equal to sample proportion minus population proportion over square root of p into bracket one minus p all over n. So the z-score of a proportion tells how many standard deviations that the proportion is away from its mean. Okay, and this mean or the mean for all sample proportions is the population proportion. And yet again, if you want to adjust, you have a large sample size, and then we are selecting without replacement, 
you may want to adjust it with a correction factor. So always we adjust the standard error with this correction factor when we have that situation. All right, when we have that situation. Okay. So if you want to compute a sample proportion, first of all, determine the population proportion. Okay. So for instance, we have 100 people, 73 are male. 70, um, that would make um, 27 to be female. All right. Now, that means that the sample proportion will be, proportion of males will be 73 over 100, which is 0 0.73. Okay. And let's assume that the proportion for the entire population was 0 0.80. So if you want to compute the standard error for the sample proportions, the standard error is P into bracket one minus P over N square root, all right? So with population proportion into bracket one minus population proportion over N. So when you do that, you are going to get 0 0.04, okay? While the population proportion is 0 0.80. And then the sample proportion is 0 0.73. So the z-score will be the sample proportion minus the population proportion divided by the standard error of the proportion. When I say standard error of proportions, it's just the standard deviation of sample proportions. Okay, standard deviation of sample proportions. So which is this, all right? And of course, the sample proportion and the population proportion, all these, I mean, all this relationship is based on the assumption of large sample size. And I said the large sample size is when sample size times the proportion is greater than or equal to five, and then um, n into back one minus p is also greater than five. So we have tested that. So it means that this relationship holds, okay? So we have a z-score of negative 1.75, which shows that a sample proportion of 0 0.73 is 1.75 standard deviations less than the, pro the population proportion. It is 1.75 standard deviations less than or far from the population proportion. So this will bring us to this, our, the end of the series on sampling distributions for sample mean, and then sampling distributions for sample proportion. In our next video, we are going to discuss issues of confidence interval, okay? So um, let's meet in the next video.